they say that in other cultures, gender is not binary. Here in the Philippines, we have what we call the babaylan. So before we were colonized by Spain, just to let you know, during the pre-Spanish era here in the Philippines, in the 16th century, they say the babaylans are female shamans. They break the gender stereotypes because they're strong women who take leadership roles and fight during combat. However, men who dress as women can also be a babaylan. So they say we're progressive back then until mm-hmm. the evil Spaniards brought Catholicism here in the country and with it, the gender binary. So what's your response to that? You have a chapter in your book about this. Yeah, we have a whole chapter in the book where we dive into this, whether it's in South American cultures and mm. cultures in Asia, Native American cultures. Uh, there, there's a very common theme. And a lot of the trans activists try to say, oh, it was before these, you know, white Eastern European, you know, colonizers came. There was this blissful existence of transgender natives that existed that were esteemed by the culture. And they're essentially what they're doing is looking down the well of history and mm. seeing their own reflection at the bottom. And look like, oh, oh, look, transgender people. And it's Good like, well, well, wait a minute. These people indeed were probably gender non-conforming in the sense that they didn't conform with the majority of how men or women lived out their sexuality. But were these women who tended to be involved in the military or in these religious rites, because many times they're involved in these pagan rites that has a lot to mm-hmm. do with spirituality, were they under the impression that they had the body of a woman, but they were actually a male? It's like, well, no, they had the body of the woman, but they were taking on male roles, but that didn't make them a man. And mm. so this is a very common theme in many cultures where, you know, the, the church is, is not saying that our gender roles and the way that we express our sexuality as men and women is all going to be uniform across the board. And it must be. It's like, well, no, partly it's impacted by culture. It's partly impacted by the effects of original sin. And we've mm. got to realize that these things are going to happen in many different cultures. But when you really look closely at them, these aren't men who are identifying as women despite having male biology. They realize, yeah, I'm a man, but I, I, I practice these particular roles. And this is very different than mm. the modern idea of gender theory, where the body is meaningless. And my mm. identity of who I truly am can be something other than my body. And so we don't need to pretend like there haven't been any cultures in the history of human civilization with individuals who practice behaviors that were gender non-conforming in the sense that that's not how most guys act or most women. History is replete with examples. But in the book, Mm. we have a whole chapter where we dive in where you have transgender activists themselves debunking this native, you know, this idea that there Mm. is this idyllic Garden of Eden type existence before the colonizers showed up. If anything, the opposite is happening, where Mm. Western civilization now is importing gender theory into developing countries, saying, if you don't teach gender theory to your kids in Africa or into Central America, then we're not going to provide you foreign aid to build that new Mm. school building. And this is going on. This is what Pope Francis calls, you know, this ideological colonization. That is more what's going on nowadays. Hi, this is Jay Aruga of the Jay Aruga Show. If you like what you just saw, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. We'll need all of your help to take back the culture from this ideological colonization of the West. Thank you.